Now to the coronavirus in the U.S. And tonight, the CDC is now investigating a potential link between vaccines and heart inflammation in younger Americans. So far, more than 200 cases, but that's out of millions of vaccinations of young people. Tonight, the symptoms to look for. Meantime, the push to vaccinate young people continues. This evening, Moderna now applying for emergency use authorization to vaccinate 12 to 17 year olds. And the numbers tonight, 172 million Americans with at least one dose. That's about 61% of everyone 12 years and older in this country. And tonight here, we continue to report on concerns that huge batches of the vaccine are set to expire and could go unused. But tonight, word from the FDA, they're extending the shelf life of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine by six weeks. Here's Marcus Moore. An expert panel today taking a closer look at reports of heart inflammation among young people after they received the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. The CDC now reporting preliminary data of 226 cases of myocarditis in people younger than 30 out of millions of people vaccinated. So far, there is no firm link to the vaccine. Though still rare, the case numbers are higher than the CDC would expect to see in the general population. When you see myocarditis, it tends to be found within a few days, uh, two to three days after the second dose of the vaccine. And it seems to start with uh, chest pain, shortness of breath, and exercise intolerance. Doctors are being told to look out for symptoms just like that. But cases appear to be mild and go away with treatment. Moderna today joining Pfizer in applying for authorization for its vaccine for 12 to 17 year olds. Just 28% of that age group has gotten their first dose. Some parents are still not ready to vaccinate their children. I would prefer to wait um, just to see how things go. Um, as of now, I don't want to even consider it. Pfizer and Moderna now testing lower doses of the vaccine in children 11 and younger. One, two, three. At Oshner Health in Louisiana, six-year-old Ellie Bowie is participating in Pfizer's trial. Her younger siblings, three and 14 months old, will get their shots soon, too. Their parents are doctors. For us, our kids living safely in a world where we don't have to worry about them getting sick from COVID, being able to go to school, have playdates with their friends, we feel strongly that vaccine is what is going to get us to those goals. And after states warned large batches of unused doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine could soon expire, today the FDA extended the shelf life for the vaccine by an extra six weeks. I believe there's good news for all or most of those doses that the expiration date will be extended, which gives us an opportunity to get those shots into people's arms. And Marcus Moore with us tonight from New Orleans. And Marcus, how was the FDA able to uh, change the expiration date uh, and, and able to reassure everyone at home that these vaccines will still be safe if you add another six weeks? David, the FDA didn't know that the vaccine could be stored longer than three months, but after studying the, the storage requirements, they determined that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine has a longer shelf life. And so tonight, uh, the White House hopes to boost demand for that vaccine in the coming weeks to make sure no doses go to waste. David. All right, Marcus Moore on the virus again tonight for us. Marcus, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.